So carbon buildup has become the scourge of the modern motorist. It never used to be a problem. So this video, we're just going to look at carbon buildup, what the problem actually is, what causes it, and what you can do to mitigate or reduce the problem from carbon buildup, and how manufacturers have engineered ways to avoid this problem from happening. There's also a few mods that we can do to a car that greatly reduce the chances of having carbon buildup. And it's certainly not a problem that affects all engines. So we're going to discuss why that is in this video. So the biggest cause of a loss of performance in a car engine is nearly always down to carbon buildup. So what is carbon buildup? Well, we're talking about carbon deposits forming around the intake and around the valves going into the engine. In really bad cases, you can lose about 50 to 60% of the airways just with carbon. That is substantially strangling your engine and it's going to have a detrimental effect on performance. But the question is, how does it get there? What are the mechanisms involved in depositing all of this carbon on the intake and the valves. And when it happens, what can you do to clean off the carbon that's built up to restore that lost performance? Many years ago, cars used to squirt the fuel in along with the air that comes into the engine. So we would call that port injection. Your typical gasoline engine had the injector upstream from the cylinder head where the air coming in would pick up the fuel and it would go into the cylinder which would then be compressed and the combustion process would take place. In modern direct injection engines that no longer happens. The fuel injector has moved to the actual cylinder itself. The fuel is injected directly into the cylinder. So it's no longer washing by the valves on the intake. And that really is the primary cause of the problem of carbon buildup. And that's why we never used to have that problem on older engines that used port injection. Many years ago, we just used to talk about a decoke. The carbon that had built up inside the engine was removed. There was an, a number of processes you could go through or a number of different fuel additives that would help to reduce this carbon carbon that had built up inside the engine. But nowadays, carbon buildup is outside the engine on that intake and the valves. And that's where it's causing major problems for the modern motorist. So what are the causes? Is it direct injection? Well, direct injection isn't causing the carbon to build up. It's just stopping the carbon buildup from being cleaned off. You see, fuel is a solvent. Gasoline is particularly good at breaking up the carbon deposits that form on the intake and the valves. So without that cleaning motion, the carbon is just going to get more and more impacted and embedded and become a big problem. But that raises the question, where does this carbon come from? Surely on the intake, you're just sucking in air from outside the engine, which shouldn't have any carbon in it whatsoever. And the combustion process is taking place in the engine and the carbon is going out of the exhaust. So that's a logical question. But the problem we have is that manufacturers have to meet emissions standards, emissions regulations. We've all got to do our little bit to save the planet. The genius ideas that manufacturers have come up with to achieve this is an exhaust gas recirculation system where some of the exhaust gases are recirculated into the intake. So that reduces the emissions. It's only active at certain times when you're driving the engine. So don't worry too much about performance problems when you're using low RPMs. Some some of those exhaust gases are flowing back into the engine. So the exhaust itself will typically contain particles of soot. But that's not the major problem either. We also have a positive crankcase ventilation system. So inside the engine, you want to maintain a constant pressure and avoid the pressure from spiking too high. So the PCV or the positive crankcase vent pushes some of this excess pressure out of the engine and it's considered bad to just dump that into the environment. So again, that goes into the intake. Think about what that air it's dumping actually contains. It's going to have that mist of oil vapors, the moistures from the combustion process, and it's going to have that sort of wet, greasy substances floating in it. And that really is the main cause of your carbon buildup. So that's creating a nice sticky environment on the intake and the valves for the carbon in the exhaust to embed itself in and start to harden. Those two systems work really in tandem and are the main culprits for dumping carbon into the intake and causing the impaction problem. Now, I know what you're thinking. If the car is running efficiently, it shouldn't be producing carbon. It should be burning all of the fuel effectively. So carbon or soot is a 
byproduct of an incomplete burn. Now, whenever you have a combustion engine, there, it's not going to be perfect. There are going to be substances coming out that haven't properly combusted. But if you're using a low quality fuel, if you've neglected the maintenance of your car, or if you're just doing short trips where the engine is naturally in its inefficient warm up cycle, you're going to be accelerating this problem. So there are three things you can do as a motorist to reduce the risk. Make sure the car is running as efficiently as possible. So a lot of people recommend injector cleaners. Now, injector cleaners will not clean off the carbon on the intake because the fuel doesn't go there. But an injector cleaner will keep the injectors nice and clean. And that means a nice, efficient spray pattern. So as it goes into the engine, it's going to burn very, very cleanly. Whereas if the injectors are starting to get silted up, you're going to have more of a jet than a mist of fuel going into the engine. And it's not going to burn properly. And the exhaust is going to be carrying more carbon around. Modern engines have particulate fuel filters which catch a lot of these carbon particles so that does go some way to reducing the risk of carbon buildup but you're just moving the carbon buildup problem to a different location you've then got to worry about the dpf regeneration and replacing the dpf when it eventually gets clogged up with all the soot that it can't burn off does carbon buildup really matter well it affects performance so in my book that really does matter i want performance from my engine if i've got an engine that i've paid for a performance engine i would certainly not be happy if i'm losing 60 to 80 percent of the power just because carbon had built up it's also reducing the efficiency of the engine so the carbon build-up problem is going to accelerate the engine is not getting enough air so it's going to be running more inefficiently it's going to be producing more soot and that's going to accelerate the problem of carbon build-up it's going to reduce the fuel efficiency so your miles per gallon is also going to drop so again in my book that's important fuel is quite expensive over here so if i can use every drop of fuel and extract the maximum amount of performance from it that ticks my box of being a successful engine if it's got this carbon problem and it's not doing that i'm effectively just wasting money the carbon builder also increases the emissions coming from the engine it reduces the efficiency of the engine and the emissions going out into the environment are more harmful and you've got the risk of the engine knocking the engine has been set up to work in a very very tight set of parameters and if you're restricting the airflow going into the engine if there's carbon building up in the head of the engine that could create hot spots so you run the risk of pre-ignition detonation and other combustion problems so what can you do well we've mentioned using good quality fuel We've mentioned using injector cleaner not to clean the carbon off the valves that's built up, but to reduce the amount of carbon produced by the engine as it burns by keeping those injectors nice and clean. Longer drives, avoiding those warm up cycles where the engine is always trying to get up to temperature, it's dumping more fuel in, it's burning inefficiently and dumping more soot. Those long drives really do help to clean up everything inside the engine. The moisture that's built up from the incomplete combustion processes inside the crankcase also reduces. So there's less of that going into the intake as the PCV does its thing. So before we talk about cleaning the car, but let's just talk about some mods that we can do to our car that will reduce dramatically the risk of carbon buildup. So we've discussed the PCV problem. Now, one way of fixing that is to fit an oil catch can. So the positive crankcase vent will push this mixture of air from inside the engine with all the noxious gases, the fluids, the moisture that's picked up, which includes the oil vapors, and it will dump that into the catch can instead of going into your intake. So effectively, your intake is getting much drier, much cleaner air coming into it. So that's going to go a long way to reducing the risk of carbon buildup. Then we come to the EGR system. So an EGR delete will prevent the carbon from going into the intake completely. So whether that is a good mod for you really depends on where you live. And in most areas, it would be illegal to do an EGR delete because that is a mod that affects the emissions of the vehicle. And in most regions, they've outlawed these mods. In some areas, you can do them for off-road use only or for motorsport use. But the question we should really be asking is, why is there so much carbon coming out of the engine through the EGR into the intake? A good engine is not producing great quantities of carbon. So maybe the problem is somewhere else and the EGR system is just moving that problem to the intake, depositing it on the valves. So make sure the engine is running efficiently, make sure it's properly tuned and set up, make sure that you're running that good quality fuel through it and you're doing those long journeys. So port injection is something that can be retrofitted to a lot of cars and people have done that to use different fuels like water methanol and ethanol fuel mixes where they 
just want more power and the stock injectors can't supply that. And interestingly, some manufacturers have done some of these things already. So the Volkswagen Group have incorporated a vapor control system on the PCV. They've also incorporated a port injection setup for the warm up cycles of the engine just to reduce the problem of carbon buildup. So some fuel is now going onto the, those valves. That's helping to clean off the carbon that has built up because fuel is, as we've said, a solvent and it contains additives designed to reduce these carbon buildup deposits. So cleaning carbon, you've got carbon buildup on your car. What can you actually do? Well, a lot of people talk about intake sprays. So you go to the intake tract of the car after the air filter, certainly after the airflow sensor, you don't want to be spraying any of these things into the airflow sensor. And at that point, you emit this spray. It's sometimes a foam or it's just a mist that forms in the intake and that goes into the intake and theoretically cleans the valve. Now, how effective is that? Well, you're typically expecting this fluid to do its job within about 10 minutes. You're, you're not going to stand there for longer than 10 minutes spraying this stuff into the intake. So that's unreasonable, really. That carbon has taken a long time to build Build up. It really needs to go through a process of softening and then more cleaner added and then a softening process and more cleaner being added. So it might be something that works if you do it repeatedly over a period of time, but that's a real hassle. It's a real faff and you actually run a risk of hydrolock. So if you get too much fluid going into the intake, the pistons in the cylinders are going to try and compress that fluid. They're not going to be able to and that is going to cause catastrophic failure or engine damage. So that would happen if the RPMs drop too low and too much liquid goes into the engine. There are professional intake cleans though that use a very carefully computer controlled spray over a long period of time and there's different phases to the cleaning process and I had that carried out on the TDI engine. It was a two litre TDI. It was a pre-CR engine and it was very very effective. It had only done about 80,000 miles if you were wondering so it didn't have a massive carbon build-up problem but even after that BG intake clean that I had done and I've not been sponsored or paid to say that that, I did see improved MPG and improved performance. So it certainly did something. I didn't at the time have a boroscope, so I couldn't check out how clean everything was, but it has certainly improved things and it only cost about £70. So I would say that was probably good value and I wouldn't want to waste a whole afternoon trying to do it myself and running the risk that's associated with these spray cleaners. So one of the best and most effective ways is getting a walnut blast done where tiny little pieces of walnut shell are blasted onto the carbon. Now you need to always make sure when you're working on an engine that the valves are closed. You don't want these carbon particles or walnut particles going into the engine. Walnut particles are pretty good because they're not going to do much damage if they do get into the engine. They're wood, they're going to burn easily and they're not going to bounce around and damage the metal but they play havoc on the carbon which is exactly where you want it. So that seems to be a very good option. It's very effective. It just requires you to take off the intake you'll be able to see into the head of the engine and inspect the valves as you go and apply the walnut blast until the valves come up nice and clean and that'll bring them to a, an as new condition so that's very very effective. We've also seen people taking off the intake and using some kind of abrasive, some kind of sanding attachment on the drill, some kind of solvents and abrasive fluids that go into the intake but you've got to be careful that you don't get any of this into the engine as we've already said so make sure the valves are closed on the part of the engine you're working on and then rotate the engine and move on to the next part as those valves are closed and clean everything out with a, a blast of air. Just make sure there's nothing in there that's going to cause a problem when you put everything back together and you start to run the car. I have heard of sandblasting being particularly effective. Now you should never do that with everything attached to the car. If you've got the head off and it's all stripped down then sandblasting is a very effective way of cleaning it but you really don't want sand going into the engine itself. Sand doesn't burn, it melts, it will cause all sorts of other problems inside the engine and and potentially cause damage to the actual cylinders and the piston rings. So you want to be very, very careful if your local mechanic is suggesting that you get that sandblasted. So in this video, we've just discussed the problem of carbon buildup, some of the ways of mitigating it as a driver, some of the mods that you can do to avoid the problem in the first place, and also what you can do when you have a carbon buildup problem to deal with. Now, engines that are mostly affected by this tend to be larger capacity, low revving engines. So if you've got a small turbo engine, engine with direct injection, you are less likely to have a problem. So you might go to 70, 80,000 before you need to think about 
cleaning the carbon off. And if you've got a large capacity four litre V8 engine and that uses direct injection, you may well have to do that after 20 or 30,000 miles. So there's a big difference between the engine, but generally give it a good thrash, use it while it's warmed up, avoid those short journeys and you should be absolutely fine. So please boot that like button if you found this video useful. I've lined this video up for you and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.